Dorcas is the only woman in the book of Acts to be referred to as a disciple. There are male individuals who are referred to that way. And there are times that groups of people that were mixed, men and women, are referred to collectively as disciples. But Dorcas is the only one singled out for that particular title. She lived in Joppa, and she is described in this text as someone who is a doer of good works and acts of charity. At the time of her death, she is surrounded by widows who mourn her passing, and they send for the apostle Peter, who is nearby. Peter comes, and he at first goes into the room where the widows are there mourning, and they all show him things that she had done, garments that she had made. And afterwards, he asks that all of them leave the room, and he kneels down next to her, and he raises her from the dead. When Dorcas recognizes Peter, he gets up, and Peter calls the widows and the other disciples into the room to see this miracle that has occurred. It's a story that reminds us of similar stories in the Bible, like the stories of the prophets Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament, when they raised people from the dead. Or the story from Mark's Gospel, where Mark records Jesus' first miracle as raising a 12-year-old girl from the dead. Peter even uses language that's very similar to the language that Jesus used in that incident. Or it might remind us of the story of Lazarus, whom Jesus rose from the dead. There is something, though, that is distinctive about this particular story. If you remember from John's Gospel, it is Mary and Martha, it is the sisters of Lazarus, who send word to Jesus to come, because the disciple whom you love, Lazarus, is death is very near death and so it's his family that sends word there but in the case of dorcas dorcas doesn't have any family members that are mentioned here but instead she is surrounded by these widows who are deeply grieving her loss we can suspect that these good works and acts of charity that the writer of acts talks about may have included making clothing for these poor widows. Dorcas is someone who has read the Bible and knows that the Old Testament says that we are to care for widows and orphans and aliens. We are to care for people who do not have families of their own to look out for them and to protect them. By the time the book of Acts was written, there was already a custom where groups of widows would get together and they would agree that they would not remarry. And instead, they would live together communally. They would look out for each other. And they would also do kind works for other people within the larger community. This gives birth to the tradition of women living together in monastic communities, which still provide even to this day. Today is Mother's Day. It's a day for us to celebrate the legacy and influence of our mother. Some of you are able to experience this day by celebrating alongside your mothers or your children. But each of us, by virtue of being here, is also a member of God's family. We are each other's brothers and sisters. This church is a part of your extended church family, your extended family community. That's what we see going on in this passage from Acts where Dorcas is someone who has surrounded herself with these widows that she cares for. And they care for and they love each other. Dorcas is someone who does acts of kindness and charity. When you and I as Christian people do acts of kindness for those in need, we are sharing God's love with one another. We are sharing a part of what God has already selflessly given to us. This isn't quite the same thing as a you scratch my back, I scratch yours way of doing good deeds for one another. 
anybody that does a favor for us but expects something in return tends to be somebody who is bitter and someone that we resent. That's different from the example that's set for us by Dorcas. What she does for other people is an extension of God's love living within her. And that's what makes her and these widows an extended church family of its day. Leo Biscaglia was a self-help author and a lecturer. I've mentioned him before in sermons. And he told a story of a woman who was a widow, and she did not have any children. And she was worried that she would spend her last days all alone. This caused her to be extremely depressed, and so she decided to see a counselor about this. The counselor listened to her story very carefully and picked up on two things about her. One, she was a member of a church, and two, she grew geraniums. So the counselor said to her, here's what you do. Whenever somebody in your church gets married or has a baby or retires, or celebrate some other milestone, take them a potted geranium. And so she began to do this. And slowly by surely, people began to affirm her when she did this. And she appreciated the way this kindness that she did made other people feel. Before long, she used some resources to build a greenhouse so she could expand her charitable doings and her work that she was doing. She looked in the newspaper to see whenever there was a birth announcement or announcement of a wedding from someone who lived in her larger neighborhood. She would do up a card, identifying herself, and she would just show up at that person's home, let them know who she was, and say, I read about your good fortune in the paper, and here I brought you this geranium. Pretty soon it grew so that hardly a week went by that she wasn't taking one or two potted flowering plants to someone else. Her local newspaper did a full page article on her, including pictures, and she was known as the geranium lady. She went from somebody who was childless and widowed, afraid that she would live out her final days all alone, to one of the most recognized and beloved people within her larger community. That's what I believe happened to Dorcas and her relationship with these widows. When you and I perform acts of charity and kindness for other people, it extends our bond with one another, and we are strengthened through the bond of God's love. I realize that there are some who are greatly physically limited, who are not able to do anything for others except to be a receptacle of the love of God shared with them by other people. And that is a sacred responsibility in and of itself. But most of us are able to do something for other people, as that woman did where she took something she was doing already, and instead of just making it a personal hobby, made it a way of sharing joy with others. All of us can send a card or a letter or write an email or pay somebody else a compliment. We can volunteer with organizations here at Northview, like Helping Hands, Days for Girls, Serving a Meal with Kids Soar, the United Methodist Women, the many Sunday school classes that do charitable works together or raise money for different causes, and the list goes on and on. There are any number of things that you and I can do to share the love of God with someone else and to offer some joy into somebody else's life. And by doing so, the Holy Spirit gifts us with the gift of joy and fellowship of our brothers and sisters in the journey. The future is always uncertain for each of us, but there is one thing that we can be guaranteed of. If we follow the example of Dorcas and find ways to share joy and acts of kindness with other people, the one thing we will never have to worry about is being alone. Amen.